Welcome everyone back to the Weekly Source. Super excited to have you and very excited for our guest today, Cynthia Coverson, uh, Senior Vice President of Regional Business at MetLife. Uh, Cynthia, welcome to the Weekly Source. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to be here. Uh, great opportunity to share. Yeah, yeah, we know we've got the partnership going and anytime we can uh, hop on video, which we'll talk about as a new trend, it, it's always nice. But um, hey, for the folks who, who may not know you or, or kind of your background, you mind just giving kind of a quick introduction and even how you got into the industry? Sure, absolutely. So I'm 27 years in the industry and uh, honestly, all of them was MetLife. So I am a certified accountant by trade. I have been with MetLife for the first 13 years. I've spent uh, most of my career on the finance side. So uh, financial planning officer for all of our domestic businesses. I also spent some time as a CFO for many of our group insurance businesses. And then um, I guess 13 years in and after spending some time in marketing, getting to know customers and brokers um, and decided I wanted to get more into the mainstream of our business. So I, uh, I have a master's degree in uh, business and technology. And so I ended up running several aspects of our service operations and our underwriting teams for a number of years. And for the last nine years, I've been running different aspects of our group insurance business. So uh, most recently I was appointed to senior vice president for our regional business and that was in 2018. So yeah, quite that's a, diverse a, background. <laughs> quite a diverse background. And I can only imagine the first couple years of that transition from accounting to finance. That's very cool. Um, you know, question, you mentioned your, your role now, you're managing a team nationwide, right? Hundreds of reps now, I would imagine, uh, across the country. I mean, talk about, you know, for our, our audience of HR teams or brokers managing teams remotely. I mean, what you find that's working? What kind of things are you doing now as we're more remote really than ever? Yeah, it's a great question. Interesting. Um, we like to think about this as a relationship business and um, obviously you build that trust and confidence in people um, as a result of spending time with people face to face. So we've literally shifted our entire business model from, you know, Instead of customer stewardship meetings in person or finalist meetings or broker strategic planning sessions or third party planning sessions, we're doing them virtually. We stood up a full team of people around that to help with the account executives do that in the most effective way. And we think that that's going to be a part of the norm as we go forward. While we expect certainly there will be places and opportunities where customers and brokers want to spend time one-on-one um, -on -one and in-person, but I think that's going to become less um, of the norm and it's going to be more limited. Sure, yeah, I think had we been recording this last year, we would have spent <laughs> money to fly to a certain location. So while there is pain in virtual, I think there is a recognition of either waste or, or kind of uh, getting more efficient with cost. So that's a, that's a good piece. I mean, okay, so pivoting from that to you know, the HR teams now, right, or, or broker going through their own periods of change. I know how on top of, you know, the, the benefits trends MetLife is corporately with your trends report. Uh, you know, what kind of stuff are you seeing now either during pan pandemic or, or kind of post pandemic? So it's an interesting question because we just recently released our uh, MetLife employee benefits trend study. It came out for 2020 um, and many of the trends are still are relevant, um, but I would have to tell you, um, COVID has given rise to some shifts in the market that I believe will remain uh, post the pandemic as well. Uh, and I, I will define shifts in the market as a change in the way employees or employers are thinking about uh, their benefits as it relates to uh, COVID-19. So a few examples um, from the seat of the employee, certainly a deeper desire to work for workplace flexibility, right? Most employers and employees are saying that that's something that they can do effectively. And there's also um, more of a general preference or tendency or acceptance now of a digital medium, which was not as pervasive as it is today. And I think the third one from an employee perspective is really around the awareness of essential benefit needs. 
um, and which really leads to this need or desire to have a deeper understanding of what the protection benefits are outside of their medical benefits um, as they think about uh, the financial well-being of themselves and their families moving forward. So from an employee seat, um, that's a couple of things that I think are really important. As I think about um, shifts from an employer perspective, certainly COVID-19 has given rise to a need to really have more flexibility in the products and services that they uh, contract on behalf of their employees. Um, they're also realizing that the workforce is really changing, right? And so um, this whole focus around uh, retaining and attracting skilled talent is gonna come with a different set of challenges post COVID-19. Um, and so you have to think about how you are gonna um, have benefits packages to attract those and retain those employees. And I think that's gonna lead them to and what we're hearing from um, employers today is really rethinking their benefits package from an overall well-being perspective. Yeah, great point. I mean, so when you think of, I mean, you're, you're seeing it every day, but some of the stuff that MetLife is either doing in response or adjusting based off the state of things, I mean, what, what are some things that come to mind uh, for you and your team? Well, I have to tell you one thing that comes to mind, and I, I shared that I've been here 27 years um, at MetLife. I could not be more proud of how we have responded on behalf of our customers uh, in a very proactive way. I think about 152-year-old company, we've certainly been through much uh, adversity. Um, we've provided support during hardships in the past. And I think about where we sit today um, and how we've responded on behalf of our customers in this COVID-19 pandemic. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty impressive. It um, makes me proud. We know that the crisis is having major impact on um, physical, emotional, and financial health of our customers and their employees. So we've been very deliberate in terms of taking actions to support uh, uh, employers and their employees and the communities that we live in. So the MetLife Foundation, for example, has committed $25 million to the global response on COVID-19. Um, we immediately impacted our, uh, enacted our business continuity plan really repositioning 40,000 people globally, mobilizing them to be able to work from home um, and not missing a beat as it relates to customer service and paying claims. We also um, really put ourselves in the seat of the customer, right? So think about liberalization of product provisions um, to make it easier for them during these financial pressures. I think about um, employees that are out on furlough, um, are working fewer hours and the need for benefits to continue, uh, extended grace periods um, in order to manage cash flows during this time while businesses um, maybe not as, uh, as healthy as people would like. And then recognizing cash, you know, that, you know, these benefit trends are a little bit differently and offering discounts on products where it makes sense like we did on our dental. So all of the sectors have been having challenges um, in terms of the business, but small businesses in particular were uh, disproportionately impacted. So we were very deliberate around um, coming up with solutions to help solve that were unique to employers under 500 lives. And a few examples of those things include holding the rates on the renewals through uh, September and also just opening up a hotline for small employers to have a resource to come to and their employees to just answer questions as uh, real time as, as possible. So just, I think our response has been great. Um, and I think we will continue to uh, keep an ear to the marketplace and make sure that we're solving for customers in a way that really makes sense um, in the current environment. No, that's amazing. And I, uh, the small business piece was, was news to me. So that is so cool what you guys are doing. I mean, nobody's trained totally how to handle something like this, but especially somebody maybe managing a business top to bottom or taking on multiple roles. So that's, uh, that's really impressive and appreciate um, what you guys are doing. Um, I know we're, we're coming at time. Um, so I do wanna thank you for, for joining us today. Thank everybody for, for tuning in. Um, and we will see everybody next week on the Weekly Source. Thanks, Cynthia. Thank you so much, Neil.